Okay, you guys, um, this is my daughters, Mia and Brooklyn, and they are opening their phone cases from one of my subscribers. Her name is Jennifer. Um, she sent all three of us a brand new phone case. I already opened mine on my last video, so my daughters are going to open theirs now. Yeah, look at this. This is so, it's so cute. cute. It has our names on it, too. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer, thank yes. You, Jennifer. You guys need a new phone covers, huh? Yeah, we do that. I did two really bad, and mine was purple, my favorite color. Oh, God. Oh, I do like it. Let me see. Oh, oh it's my so God. Cute. This is so <gasps> What does it say on there? It says. Flawless. She probably like the little cheerleading thing. <gasps> Mia, she knew you were a cheerleader. This is really cute. Oh my god. I like it. I like the little diamond things on there. That is so cute. Mine was purple. Your guys are pink. Say happy girls are the prettiest. Oh my god. It says happy girls are the prettiest. Oh. I love it, Jennifer. Thank you, thank you so, you so much. This is beautiful. Wow. That was just. Also, Jennifer, one of my subscribers, also said, "Do you do you make and sell these? Because they would totally buy them." So, yes, just let you know. Like, hello. Show it up close. So cute. Yay! Those are so awesome. That's really cool. Thank you so much. All right, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for watching and subscribing and being a part of our family, our friends, and everything. And we love you. And back to homework and schooling yeah. and <laughs> bedtime. Bye. Bye. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. I, yeah, sorry for my absence. I've been gone for a week, but guess what? My mom and dad are in town, you guys, and they're at my house, so that's why I haven't uploaded in a week, and I'm so sorry, but I'm back. My, my parents are still here, but my mom was like, don't worry about it, you know, just, just do your video. So I've been spending time with them, but anyways, okay. Um, so you might hear a lot of background and stuff. My mom's probably gonna be walking back and forth through the kitchen because she's cooking dinner for the family tonight, and this is my dinner. So we have Chinese food. Um, I have vegetable lo mein right here. I have um, dumplings and egg rolls, um, crab rangoon, sesame chicken, brown stir fried rice, white rice, coconut shrimp, and mango shrimp. That's what's on the menu. And I got extra sweet and sour because you know, I love my sauces. And my life water. And that's about it. So let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this food. Bless this food and sanctify it by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Always say your prayers. And I got my, my hand towel here. Okay, I also got... I ordered these on Amazon. They are little kid chopsticks. They're so cute. Because I'm a dum-dum when it comes to using these. But... They cross. See, when you try to do them, they cross. They're, they're not sturdy. So stupid. I got like, I don't know, probably like 20 of these. And they're crap. So don't, so don't get them. So I'm going to try. I'm still going to try to use them, but I got my regular chopsticks here too that I can't use. Okay. Welcome to story time, baby number four. And you guys... <sighs> You guys already know this is gonna get emotional for me. I hate talking about this, but at the same time, I love it because you know it's it's my testimony. So there's a crab rangoon, you guys, and I I want I want to tell it. You know I, I've been through a lot, and I want to tell everybody what I've been through. And hopefully, somewhere somebody it'll touch my story will touch you guys. So okay, here we go. Mmm, -hmm. so good. I can eat these every day for the rest of my life. Mmm. I wrote everything down because, not because, you know, um, I'm making it up or whatever, but because. This was such a painful time in my life that I choose to block it out sometimes. And um, so I wrote stuff down so I won't forget. 
my sesame chicken. Mmm. I'm using these anyways. Mm. Just flung in my lap. Okay, so I'm gonna get to story time really quick because it's gonna be a really long video if I don't. This is the mango shrimp. And it has, look at that, they're clumped together. And that has chunks of mango right here. Oh my God, let me try. That is delicious. Okay, where was I? Baby number three. Okay, yeah, I already told you guys my last story time, baby number three. So this is baby number four. And okay, I was a stay-at-home mom, obviously. I had three small kids. Um, my husband at the time was a construction worker welding. We, we had our own house. My husband at the time, he made really good money being a welder. Um, he would do shutdowns a lot, you know, 712s. Um, he worked a lot, he worked hard and he was a good provider. And you know, we always, we were not hurting financially. We were doing really well, even though I didn't work. And we only had his, his income as a sole income, and that was it. Um, so, that was my life, you know. Married young, had kids young. I, was, I had three kids. And I've always had that longing feeling in my being for a daughter. I just, I wanted a daughter so bad. So, um... Out of all my six kids, you guys, my daughter, my firstborn daughter, was the only one I planned. Like, I wanted it. Mm-hmm. So, we were living in Irving, Texas at the time. If I happen to look over here, it's because I'm trying to, you know, everything I wrote down, I'm telling you. We lived in Irving, Texas. He was a welder um, in Midlothian, Texas. Um, so um, I would I would think about you know having another baby. I'm like you know what, I already have three. Um, I don't work. I stay at home. We have you know plenty of money to do what we need to do with because my husband made good money. I'm like, why not? You know, I want a daughter so bad. So, I was on the pill, a different form of pill, because the last pill that the doctor put me on was terrible. I would bring it up to my husband, you know, like this white rice has um, plum sauce on it with soy sauce. I just poured it on top. Mmm, that's so good. So he said, I was talking to him about it. I'm like, you know what? I really want a daughter. I really want a daughter. He, I'm like, what do you think? And he's like, yeah, the more the merrier. You know, let's do this. You know, he, he didn't care. Like he, he didn't care. But that has to do with a lot of my last video. When you guys heard my me say in my last video, I'll just keep getting you knocked up so no one would want you. Yeah, I guess that's where that came from. But He, um, he said he didn't care. So I didn't get off the pill yet because I was still like, you know, trying to make up my mind. Like, do I really want to do this? You know, um, I don't know yet. So I was kind of just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I was craving Chinese food. It was so good. 
So then, like, you know, a few months went by, and it was still, like, really, really on my heart. And I was longing for it. So I got off the pill. And... just waiting, you know, for me to miss a period, waiting for it to happen, you know, I was getting really excited. But it, it, wasn't, it wasn't happening. And I was like, this is weird. Like, uh, I'm fertile myrtle. Like, you know, my ex-husband just look at me and I get pregnant, that kind of thing. So it was kind of like, it was weird to me. I was like, what's going on here? But it wasn't happening. So One night I went to bed. And I had this dream. And it was the most vivid, most prophetic dream I've ever had in my life. It was insane. I dreamt that I got pregnant. And I dreamt that I got pregnant with a little girl. And in my dream, her name was Mia Bella. And I was like, you know, woke up from that dream. And like the next morning I was, I woke up and, um, my mom was over one day and I said to her, I said, mom, I had the most craziest dream. You're not going to believe it. She goes, what, what? And I said, I had a dream that I got pregnant again. And I had a dream. It was a little girl. And in my dream, her name was Mia Bella. And my mom's like, are you serious? Oh my God, that's a beautiful dream. What a beautiful name. I said, I know it was so weird. I woke up and I thought it was real and it wasn't real. Anyways. That rice is. Hmm. Okay, so I didn't miss a period yet. I didn't miss a period yet, but I felt like, you know, I felt symptoms of a pregnancy and a coconut shrimp. And so I was like, well, maybe it's my mind playing tricks on me or maybe, you know, it's my period coming because um, period symptoms can mock pregnancy symptoms. So I was, you know, I was like, whatever. But then in the back of my mind, I was like, no, I really feel that this is this is it. I feel like that dream meant something. So I went to the dollar store and I got a dollar test. They have dollar tests there. I came home and I took the test. Mmm. It was negative. Pineapple. Mmm. And so I'm like, oh, well, I was really disappointed. So I said, well, I guess that was just a dream and it's not going to happen. So I threw the test in the trash and I was like, well, let me just see if I miss a period, you know? So I went about my day and then my, um, my sister-in-law at the time, she was over visiting and my mom had told her about uh, the dream I had and you know that like you know Kristen had a really prophetic dream and she you know really thinks that this might happen and so my sister was like hmm and my mom's like she oh no she already took a test you know she's not she's not pregnant she already took a test and it was negative <clears throat> so I had left to go somewhere. I don't know where I went, but as I was in the car coming home, my sister-in-law goes in the bathroom and she goes to the trash and she calls me on the phone and she's like, she's like, um, you need to come home and see this. I said, see what? She goes, just come home. So I was like, what the heck? So I was like, okay, I'll be there in a minute. I got home. And she's like, um, you're pregnant. 
And I said, what? I said, no, I'm not. I already took a test. It's negative. She goes, I dug it out of the trash and look, and she showed it to me and it was positive. And I was like, what? I said, I waited the three minutes. I waited the three minutes and it said no. And she's like, well, go get another one right now and let's just see what it's going to say. So this time I went, I went to Walmart and I got the EBT because I was like, well, maybe that's a faulty, you know, pregnancy test. Came back. Came back, um, took that to the APT test. And positive. Hmm. Uh, I was like, I was in, I couldn't even believe it. I was in shock. I was like, what? So, okay. So then my husband came home from work um, that day and I told him, I said, um, guess what? I said, we're having another baby. I was showing the test. He was like, oh, that's awesome. And he hugged me, you know, and he acted like he was all excited. <laughs> yeah, right. So I knew in my heart, I knew, I knew, I knew. I was like, her name is Mia Bella. This is my dream. This is my dream coming true. That's it. It's a girl and, I, and that's her name. So, <laughs> you know, um, let's see. Okay, leading up, you know, a few months went by and my husband at the time was, um, uh, they didn't give me any sauce for these, how weird, oh well. Mmm. He started to act really strange, he started to be really cold and distant to me, like, he wasn't like rubbing my tummy or asking me how I feel or anything like that. He was just acting really, really like standoffish. Um, you know, he wasn't really helping me much because I had three small kids and I was pregnant again. So he would literally just come home from work and like go to bed or like go in the backyard and start drinking and uh, smoking cigarettes and just like turning up loud music and like just flat out ignoring me. One day, I can remember this like it was yesterday. Oh my God. Um, I was four months pregnant at this time. And, you know, um, had an ultrasound and, and it was a girl. And I was like, oh my God, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, I mean, there's no changing my mind is what I said about her name. That, that was my dream. The Lord gave me that dream and I'm keeping it. So that's her name. And so my mom was like, that's a beautiful name. And of course he was like, whatever, I don't care what you name the kid, you know, kind of thing. So yeah, um, so I was four months pregnant and he came home from work one day. Sorry, my dog's barking. I can't help that. I was like a puppy dog in the windowsill waiting for him to come home look around the time I knew he was gonna come home I'd be looking out the window and I just get so excited like a freaking dog in the window you know waiting for his owner it was so ridiculous but I did and so um, I noticed he started coming home later and later from work like he wasn't you know he normally always came home at the same time every day and he started coming home later and later. So I was sitting by the window, looking out the window, you know, waiting to hear his truck pull up because he, he drove a work truck at the time. He finally showed up. It was like two hours after he was supposed to be home originally. That shrimp, guys, it's so good. And he comes walking through the door. And I was like, hi. And I went like, I, I walked up to hug him. Like, right? I was like, I missed you. I said, how was your day? And when, he, when I hugged him, he kind of just like pushed me off. He kind of just like, 
oh, don't, I'm tired, I'm tired, and like kind of just pushed me off. And I was like, I was taken back by it because he's never done that to me before. And so I was like, oh, I said, okay. He goes, I'm just going to go take a shower. I said, okay, you hungry? I said, I just made dinner. Dinner's in there on the stove. Uh, he's like, no, I'm not hungry. So he like goes in the room and he takes his boots off and he puts his, his welding bag down. And I'm standing in the door jam watching him. And I'm just like, I'm so hurt that he pushed my hug away. And I'm so hurt he wouldn't even look at me in the face. And he gets a towel and he goes into the bathroom and he just shuts the door. And I was following right behind him, like, you know, to talk to him more or whatever. Or to say, do you want me to get you your plate? You know, maybe you're going to change your mind. I'll have your plate ready. And as I was walking up to the bathroom, he shuts the bathroom door like in my face. And I was like, and I just stood there and I was just sesame chicken. I heard him um, go pee and flush the toilet. And then I heard him turn a shower on. And then I heard him get in. So I walked away. Mm. Um, he was in there for about 40 minutes. Not kidding. Forty minutes to take a shower. And he normally took like five, six minute showers. So I finally went up to the bathroom door and I and I kind of tapped on it with my finger, you know, I didn't knock, but I had my forehead resting on the door like this, and my hands were on the door. And I just I just remember feeling so sad. I just and it wasn't just because he pushed my hug away. I just felt something wasn't right. And I felt such a overwhelming sadness just fell upon me. Like I just wanted to start crying right then and there. And so I put my head on the door and I put my hands on the door. And I kind of went like this with my finger. Like, you know, because I, I didn't want to knock. I don't, I don't know why. I felt like he'd yell at me or something. So... By this time the shower was off, he he had already gotten that shower a long time ago. So he was just sitting in there. Like I didn't hear the water, I didn't hear nothing. So that's why I was at, oh, so then he goes, what? Just like that, so ugly to me. And I said, oh, he didn't even know it was me. He, it could have been, you know, uh, whoever. <clears throat> One of the kids or something. But I said, what are you doing in there? And he goes, To the day I die, I will never forget these words or how they felt. I will never forget how this made me feel and what he said to me. His response was, I'm getting away from you. And at that moment, I backed up and no expression on my face, but just tears were rolling down. And I couldn't even say anything. I was like, I was shocked. I was in like utter shock. So I, <clears throat> I just said, okay. That's all I said. I said, okay. I walked away, went into the bedroom. I laid on the bed and I just bawled. I bawled and I was hugging my pillow. And... I just felt like the overwhelming sadness that I can't even explain. It just was like a cloud over me. I guess because in, in, like in my heart, I knew it was coming. You know, I knew. I, I just knew something. And please keep in mind, this was my high school sweetheart. He took my virginity, you know my first boyfriend the first guy I ever fell in love with you know it, he was everything to me and I had three small kids 
uh, four months pregnant with the the next, you know. <sighs> so he comes into the room and I'm still laying on the bed. At this uh, time, I um, like I heard him coming out of the bathroom, so I'm trying to like dry my tears up, trying to wipe my face because I was embarrassed. I didn't want him to know I was crying. So he came in there. And he didn't say one word to me. And he was just like uh, getting dressed. And really, really good. I got up from the bed. And I just felt like an overwhelming, like I felt compelled, an overwhelming feeling to hug him. I don't know why, even though he just told me he wants to get away from me. But I got up from the bed and I was fighting back tears. And I just, I said, maybe if I just hug him, he'll hug me because I need that right now. So I went to hug him and he elbowed me, not hard, just kind of like, he, and he said, get off me. And I said, why are you doing this to me? Why are you treating me like this? I said, what's the problem? And he goes, get away from me before I kick you in the stomach and make you lose that baby. And he walked out of the room and he went to the garage, cracked open a beer and started blaring music. And he sat down and he, was lit, he lit up a cigarette. And he was out there getting drunk and smoking and listening to music. And I was still standing in the same position. Still standing there. Ugh. I just, I couldn't cry because I was in my body was in shock. My mind was in shock. Everything. I was still standing exactly where he pushed me away at and told me that. I was just still standing there. Just staring at the closet. I didn't, I, like, I couldn't move. Oh, so then, um, I went into the kitchen and these are so good, you guys. I, you know, fed the kids and I was just telling myself, he's just tired. He's just tired, you know? He doesn't feel that way. He loves you. You know, he's just exhausted. You know how women do? Plus, I was like terrified. I was, you know, pregnant with my fourth baby and, you know, I didn't, I don't know, but... So I just fed the kids and I ended up putting him to bed and he was still out there and I knew don't, you know, cause he would get drunk a lot back in the day. I told myself, you know, you can't talk to him when he's drunk cause he, he starts yelling and screaming and calling me horrible names. So I didn't want that. So I just went into the room and let him do his thing. And I was just, I started crying again by myself in the bedroom. The kids were asleep. The next day, well, I, I cried myself to sleep. I don't even know what time he came to bed. I just cried myself to sleep and that was it. I don't remember him getting in bed or anything. The next day, of course, I woke up. He was already gone for work. A couple of weeks went by and during those couple of weeks, he would come home. I, at the time, I didn't know he was high because I had never experienced anybody with drugs or not with drugs, period, for myself, nothing. I didn't know what high was. I mean, I knew what it was, but I didn't know what it looked like. You know, I couldn't tell, like, if you look at somebody, oh, they're, they're tripping, they're high, you know. I didn't know that. I've never been around people who are high before. So he would come home within those next couple of weeks higher than a kite. And I, at the time, I was like, oh, he's just exhausted, you know, or... You know, he's, he, his mind's tripping because he's so tired. I was so gullible, you guys, and just so... But yeah, motherfucker was high as shit. Oh my God. 
So he'd come home from work super tripping. And he'd be like, um, oh my God, oh my God, Kristen, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. And I'm like, what? And he would grab me by the arm and he would like lead me into the bedroom, shut the door and lock the door. And he'd tell me to get down on my knees, get down on your knees, get down on your knees. I said, what's going on? So I got down on my knees and he's like, bow, bow your head, dunk your head. He freaked me the hell out. And so finally I did. And he goes, don't move. I said, what is going on? I started crying because you know, you're emotional as hell when you're pregnant. But also because the way he was treating me and I was just emotional wreck back then. But so I got down on the floor and he gets up and he's, he gets up on his knees and he's peeking through the blinds. Like he opens the blinds like this much and he's peeking through the blinds and he goes, oh my God. I said, what are you talking about? What's going on? Who's out there? He goes, it's the Mexican mafia. They're after me. I said, what? He goes, yeah, they're, they're after me. Don't look. They got, they got people surrounding the house right now. This piece of shit was so high off his motherfucking mind. He thought like the Mexican mafia was after him because he was really bad involved in drugs, you know? Anyway, um, several nights he came home like that. He'd make me get on the floor, tell me people are out there with guns and, um, oh my God. I didn't know what to think. I was just, sometimes I believed him. Like, why are these people here? Like, what, what do they have? How do they know you? What do they have to do with us? Anyways, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> mm. So then one day he was at work and I get a, I get a phone call. I pick up the phone and this guy's like, Hey, this is so-and-so. Um, is so-and-so there saying my husband's first name and last name? I said, I said, no, he's at work. I said, may I ask who's calling? And he goes, Oh, this is so-and-so. And he goes, uh, you think your husband's at work? I said, yeah, he's at work. He works um, shutdowns. Um, he, if he's not working shutdowns, he works Monday through Friday. Today's Tuesday. He's at work. This guy started chuckling and he goes, um, is this his wife? And I said, yes, it is. And he goes, uh, well, let me just tell you that your husband's not working. Okay. He's been at my house every day, shooting up in my bathroom and uh, getting drunk or getting drunk and high at my house every day. Does he really tell you he's at work? I, I started shaking. I started shaking. I was like, um, he was giving me information that only me and my husband knew about him. You know what I mean? Like he was saying things that only I would know. So I know he's telling the truth. So then, you know, he told me a few other things, but then we finally hung up and everything clicked. Everything made sense to me. I was like, all the times he was saying, get down, get down. There's people outside our house with guns. Oh my God, they're going to kill us as a Mexican mafia. It all was making sense to me now. I was like, was he high on drugs when he comes home? Then the bills started piling up. And long story short, because I don't want this video too long, but I, I could talk to you guys for days. But um, that went on for a while. Um, finally, he came home that day that I talked to that. Oh, and before that, he was a drug dealer. Okay. Before the drug dealer hung up the phone, he goes, um, I just want to tell you, Mrs. Miss so-and-so, you know, my last name. He's like, I just want to tell you, I've been a drug dealer for 35 years and I have never in my entire life came across a man like your husband. He is the most manipulative, most vindictive, most um, um, psychotic person I have ever come across in all the years I've been drug dealing. And he goes in for me to say that is saying something about that person. I got chills and I, 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 I said, thank you. I said, thank you for letting me know all this. I said, thank you. Finally hung up. But <clears throat> so he ended up coming home that night and 
He walks in the door. Of course, he's, he's fucking out of his mind high. And there was no point in asking him or talking to him when he's under the influence of anything. There was no point. So I didn't. I just cried. I just cried and I like was in, I couldn't believe it. So I called my mom. I'm the type of person that, that hides things. I do. I, I hide a lot. I don't. I'm a very private person. I know that's hard to believe I'm on YouTube, but I really am. I'm a very private person. Um, it took everything in me to call my mom and let her know what was going on because I was scared at this point. So I called her and I told her. And she's like, are you serious right now? And I said, yeah, I think he was doing drugs. And so she's like, I want you out of there. That's not safe for you and the kids. And anyways, okay, so we ended up losing our house. He wasn't working. He was going to get fucked up on drugs and alcohol. Um, yeah, so we lost our car. They repossessed our car because he wasn't making the payments. He wasn't working, making the money. Um, and we got an eviction notice on our house. So I told him, I said, finally, like the next day he was leaving for work. And I said, no, you're not going anywhere right now. You need to talk to me. He goes, what are you talking about? Like, you know, he's getting all offended. I said, some stranger calls our house, says he's your drug dealer and says, you haven't been going to work. You've been going up and shooting up in his bathroom and, you know, bills are piling up. Um, we got a notice that, um, they're going to repossess our car. I got a notice that we need, we're going to be evicted if we don't pay the rent. Uh, he just, he just sat on the bed and he was looking down and he has hands like this on his knees and just looking down like that. I was saying all this stuff to him and he wasn't looking up at me talking to me nothing he wasn't even acknowledging me you know and I started crying I'm like what are we gonna do what are we gonna where are we gonna go you know we lost our car we're losing our house what what is going on here and he looked up at me and he said I'm leaving you I said, what? And he goes, I'm leaving you. And then in fact, my mom's outside right now and she's picking me up with all my things. He had already packed all of his shit, uh, uh, packed it all. Someone's on the side of the house. Some was in our closet in the corner, like everything that he wanted to take with him. He already had packed. I said, what are you talking about? I went over there and, and opened the blinds. And sure enough, his mother was sitting outside our house in a car waiting for him. She didn't even have the decency to like come in the house and say, what's going on? You know, I'm here to pick up my son, but I don't know what's going on. Are you okay? Are you and the kids okay? Nothing. So cold hearted and heartless. She just sat out there. It wouldn't like nothing. Just waiting for him to walk out with his things and, and take him away. That's it. I started uncontrollably crying. I went to go hug him. Like, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. I was shaking, shaking. I was scared out of my mind, you guys. I just, I, I had no work history. I just got a GED online because I didn't, I didn't go, you know, I didn't finish high school. I had three kids pregnant again. And I was just like, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me like that. And I was like grabbing at his clothes. Like it was so terrible. And he was like, get off me, get off me, just get off me. 
And he grabbed the last few of his things and loaded it. His mom jumped out of the car and she's like helping him, like like curbside service bullshit. She's like grabbing his stuff and putting it in the car. Like she couldn't wait to get him out of there or something. And he jumps in the front seat. Wasn't even a fuck you. Wasn't even a go die bitch. Nothing. Just just fucking left. All right. I sat there and watched him pull away in that car and it was like I was watching my life leave it was my my everything you know he just he just left me he just freaking abandoned me kids house car that were all about to be taken away I was just literally dumped okay so I called my mom hysterical and I told her what happened and she ran over immediately and my dad and we ended up packing the whole house and I ended up moving with my parents, of course, you know, because where was I going to go? And so, of course, you know, months went by, my pregnancy was progressing. Um, no word from him, no word from him. It was like he just vanished, like, like off the face of the earth. <clears throat> Couldn't get a hold of him, didn't know how to get a hold of him, didn't know where he was at, nothing. The weeks went by, nothing. Turned into months, nothing. Except, you guys, I was so stressed out and so depressed and so just emotionally fucked up in the head that my whole entire pregnancy with my firstborn daughter, Mia, I gained 12 pounds. The whole entire pregnancy, 12 pounds. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. Um, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. She was seven pounds and one ounce when she was born. And the rest was just like placenta and uterus. I, I gained no weight. 12 pounds. For a whole pregnancy. The doctor, like at one point, he said, you need to start eating. I mean, he put me on Prozac too because at the time, I don't know if it's okay now, but back then the doctor said Prozac with the child is okay. Being pregnant? I don't know. But they put me on Prozac because I, I just, I, I was, couldn't stop crying. Couldn't sleep. I refused to eat anything. I was so sick to my stomach. Okay, one night, can you imagine what I, what I went through? Like, my husband just takes off and I don't hear a hide or hair of him. Like, you know? One night, I get a phone call. <sighs> and it was him. And when I heard his voice, I just like my whole entire world lit up. Like he's like Kristen. And I was like, so-and-so, you know, like, is that you? And he goes, hi. He goes, what are you doing? <laughs> I started crying, sobbing. I love you so much. Where are you? Please come home. Please come home. I said, we lost the house. We lost the car. I said, where are you? I was so happy just that he called. I was so happy that I heard his voice. I knew that he was going to say, I'm coming home, you know. This was months, like weeks and months that he left and I didn't hear from him. I would even call his mom and his, his mom would be like, I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at. He's doing his own thing. I don't know where he's at. She would lie to me. She wouldn't even tell me. So he goes, this was that night, okay? This was that night. And he said, um, I said, please tell me you're coming home. Please, I met my mom and dad's. We had nowhere to go. Please, please come here. Please come home. Um, he said, I just called to tell you one thing. And I was like, what, what? He goes, I'm just calling to tell you that I get pussy every single night. 
and I love it. And it's way, this life that I'm living now is way better than the life I, I ever had with you. He goes, yeah, I get so much pussy that I don't know what to do with. He said, actually, I'm about to get some right now. And he, he hangs up the phone. <sighs> That's what he said to me. I... I believe I was seven months pregnant at this time and I dropped the phone. He already hung up, but I dropped the phone. I didn't hang it up. I just dropped it and I started screaming, crying, shaking. I was like, ran to my room and my mom heard me. She heard me and she ran in there and she's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And um, I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even talk. I was just like, just crying and crying. And I was like grabbing her. I was like, you know, like she was grabbing me. I was grabbing her and I was, she, she knew. I, she's like, you're shaking. What is going on? What is going on? I finally... I finally stopped crying and I, <clears throat> I told her what he said to me and I told her how the phone conversation went and he just hung up and that's what he said to me and he just hung up. And literally my mom, like I spent the night, my son's back there, it's okay. Gavin, it's okay, you can do what you gotta do. I spent the rest of the night, my mom was crying. My mom was sobbing. She was sobbing with me, um, you know, and finally she ended up, you know, are you okay? You're going to be okay. You come get me anytime you need me. It's going to be okay. You don't need him. You and the kids don't need him. So she like went to bed and... Anyways, sorry. Um, so um, she went to bed and I told her I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna be okay. And he called me again, he called me again and he said the same shit. And I heard like girls in the background and I heard like, like oh my God, like that, you know? And like they were calling his name, like get off the phone, come back to bed and all this stuff and he's like yeah you hear that and he hung he hung up again he was like taunting me he was torturing me he evil evil i hung up the phone and i turned my i unplugged my phone i turned it off i i because I knew he was going to keep doing that to me and I couldn't deal with it. I threw myself in bed and I was just praying and asking God, why, 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 why? And I was crying so hard. I couldn't catch my breath. I felt like I was going to pass out. And so... I was, I felt like the deepest despair I've ever felt in my entire life. I have never felt despair like that. Fear, depression, anxiety, stress, um, just despair and just all these feelings were just nagging at me, downpouring on me. They were just, it was, I couldn't control it and... I actually, um, it's 
going to be a, a warning, you guys. You, you might want to click off now if some people can't stand to hear or trigger warnings or whatever, or this is going to be not for kids. But I got up. I went into the kitchen. And I just said, I can't. I can't do this. I cannot live this way. I can't. I can't bring four babies into this world. I can't even support them. I can't even take care of them. I'm by myself. You know, um, there's just, there's just no, there's no out for me. There's no win for me. There's no nothing. And I just, picturing my husband, you know, screwing some girls while I'm pregnant with his baby and I'm left alone and thrown out like trash and just abandoned. Like, you know, like I didn't mean anything to anybody, to him especially. So, I went into the kitchen and I got a knife. <sighs> and I had this knife in my hand. And I put it up to my wrist and I told myself death is better than this death is death is a better option for me at this point because there was no light of day for me there wasn't and if it wasn't for my parents helping me at the time I would have been homeless with these kids and there was there was no light at the end of the tunnel nothing so I put the knife up to my wrist and I was about two, two seconds away from slitting it right down the middle, not across, right down the middle. I was going to do it on both sides and I was just going to collapse on the floor and just be done with it. And the second that I grabbed the knife and I put pressure to my arm. <laughs> My baby inside of my tummy, <laughs> she flipped, she flipped or she, she kicked so hard or something that she jerked me back. I've never felt a baby do this before in my womb and I've had six of them ever. <laughs> I literally just went like this and I felt the biggest movement in my stomach it jerked me back I dropped the knife and I realized that's my baby my baby is telling me I deserve to live and so do you you're not doing this you know hello I'm alive in here and I dropped the knife and I realized I realized what just happened it was like God himself intervened and made that my daughter leap in my, in my womb and to make, stop me from doing that. I collapsed to the floor and I just, I got in the fetal position on the kitchen floor and I was just crying so hard, so hard. I, of course, my mom woke up and she came in there and she, we were both just sobbing and I was telling I was telling her exactly what I was going to do and what happened and oh, God, I ended up of course sleeping with my mom that night I didn't sleep alone but you know it just goes back because when I had that dream of you know before I even knew I was pregnant with her, the Lord gave me a dream. I was gonna be pregnant with a little girl and to name her Mia Bella. And then I ended up getting pregnant. I ended up being a girl. And she's the one that saved my life. That baby in the womb saved my life that night. If it wasn't for her, I'm telling you right now, I would not be here today. I would not be here talking to you guys today. I would not. And her name means my beautiful. I mean, how 
amazing is that? Like, <sighs> so, um, another month went by. My mom and dad, like, were, you know, they were, they were marriage counselors. They were, um, they were in the ministry, um, you know, counseling people so that they were, you know, trained in that field. So they were counseling me and just talking to me on a daily basis, you know, trying to help me through this most horrific time in my life. And, um, I ended, okay. Another month went by and I was eight months pregnant at this time. And, um, I got a phone call and it was him. And I would cry, I would, okay, before I go there, there wasn't a night that went by after this happened that I did not cry myself to sleep. I cried myself to sleep every single night. I was a walking pregnant ball of stress. I only gained 12 pounds my whole pregnancy. I just, it was, it was horrific. And, um, so he called, he, a phone, the phone rang, I answered it, it was him. And when I heard his voice, I went to slam the phone down and just not even hear what he had to say, because I was probably going to taunt me again about being with some more bitches or something. But before, I was going to hang it up. He was sobbing, 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 sobbing so hard he couldn't talk so hard he couldn't catch his breath and i know what you're thinking fuck him screw that shit go cry in the corner somewhere bitch you know what i mean yeah i know right but you also gotta remember i wasn't in my right mind and i literally tried to kill myself because he left me and i was vulnerable i was scared to death i was alone i was pregnant and he called me sobbing saying that he's sorry saying that he loves me and the kids and he'd do anything for us and he was out of his mind and it was the drugs talking um he wants to come back home and make it right of course i started sobbing too i believed every word he said It was more of, I was scared to death to be alone with kids, you know, how am I going to take care of them? I think it was more of that than anything at the time, but he begged to come home. I said, of course you can come home. Of course. And I said, did you really cheat on me? Did you, were you really unfaithful? Or were you just like being hateful and taunting me? And he said, can we talk about this some other time? I just want to come home. Obviously, I already knew my answer, but I said yes. So against my parents, my brothers, everything, this piece of shit, I allowed him to come back home. My family was devastated. I was so upset. I let him back in my life. But I believed him. I believed his stupid stop, sob story. I did. Because I was, you know. Well, you know. Anyways. He moved in to my parents' house with us because we lost our house. Um, another month went by and I was nine months pregnant at this time. And I really didn't ask him questions about why he did that, why I, I didn't, I didn't. <sighs> at the time, I was just so happy and so at peace. And I finally was eating and I finally was sleeping and I finally felt like I could enjoy my pregnancy. And I finally felt like a, you know, a normal human being because he was just there. So I didn't want to rock the boat. I didn't ask him any questions. I didn't ask him if he really cheated on me and, and who it, I didn't, no, I didn't want to upset him. Can you believe that? I didn't say anything to him. 
Well, comes time for me to have the baby. I was induced with her because, yeah, I was, um, I was having contractions, but they were like irregular and some would hurt and some wouldn't, but it wasn't like a horrible pain. It, it just lasted like that for a couple of weeks. Finally, I told my doctor, I said, I can't take this anymore. He, he had me come in and check me. No dilation, no nothing. He sent me back home. Several times I go in, I'm having contractions, having, con nope, nothing, send me back home. <sighs> Do you guys remember the Lacey Peterson story? Scott Peterson, Lacey Peterson. This is another reason why my fourth pregnancy, I went through a lot, but it means a lot to me because of what happened. But Lacey Peterson, her husband killed her when she was eight months pregnant. And at the time, I was pregnant with Lacey. This happened in 2003, what happened to her. And me and her were both pregnant at the same time. I was a month ahead of her. She was a month behind me. So... Um, my due date with Mia was January 8th. Lacey's due date with her son, Connor was February 10th. So I was exactly a month behind her. So, oh God, it's just so upsetting because that story, uh, Lacey Peterson and Scott Peterson, I was, I was hooked. I was hooked on that because, um, when, when it was all over the news and everything, I just, just literally, uh, I think I just gave birth or I was about to give birth, something like that, but I was obsessed with that story because I was there with her. It was, it was so crazy, but yeah, that's who my ex reminds me of. He reminds me a lot of Scott Peterson, like a psychopath like that. Anyway, I had the baby, beautiful baby girl, Mia, you guys have seen her. She's in my videos. Um... While I was in labor with Mia, they had to give me four shots um, to stop, um, to make my blood clot because I was losing so much blood. The doctor gave me, you're, normally they only give you one shot to like thicken your blood up so you don't bleed out. One shot is good for any woman in labor. I ended up having four because I was losing so much blood. I was also in labor with her for three uh, three days as well. They gave me Pitocin and all that, but wasn't really progressing. Until finally the third day. It's always the third day for some reason with me. That's when I finally went into labor and it was like, okay, she's coming for real. But anyways, yeah. Um, gave birth naturally. Of course, I had an epidural. Come on now. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> but. That was it. I had her and she's beautiful, healthy, and perfect. And she was so tiny compared to my big sons that I had, you know, she was, she was like this big, oh my God. But the Lord finally gave me a daughter and that daughter saved my life. Even before she was born, she saved my life. It's just an amazing, remarkable, just testimony unto the Lord. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. 
And yes, I did stay with him still, and I did have two more kids with him. Yeah, and those story times are coming up too, but anyways, this video is over an hour long now, and I just had to share that because, like I said, you know, I want you guys to know who I am personally. I just don't want you to look at me like another YouTuber, so, and I, I want to share my stories with you. Anyways, this food was freaking delicious, and I highly highly enjoyed it okay that's all i have left but my makeup's probably all smeared too all right you guys i hope you enjoyed the story time i hope you enjoyed um this meal that i ate for you and um sorry i was gone for a week but you have to understand my parents are here and my mom just had that major surgery, you guys, so I've been spending time with her, and she's doing amazing. So my next upload is going to be with my mom, you guys. We're going to do a video together, and it's going to be a daughter and um, mother questionnaire. It's going to be good. It's going to be funny. We're going to see who knows, who, get, who knows each other the best. Excuse me. All right, I'm going to get off here now. I will see you guys in the next video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and... Um, Talk to me in the comments below because I talk to everybody. Okay, I love you guys. Bye.